Do you got any of that stuff? What's going on, Dungeon Dwellers? Welcome back to Dave's Dungeon. I am your host, as always, the one, the only, Dungeon Master Dave. Here once again with another entry in Spooktober 2023. A full list of spooky delights to carry us all the way through to Halloween where we burn it down at the end and do six of the scariest and most horrifying and most revolting films that we can get our hands on. Well, let's not jump ahead. Tonight, today, this time, we have The Stuff. This movie is from 1985. It is a Larry Cohen joint. If you guys know anything about that, we're going to have another one this season because I don't think enough of Larry Cohen gets shown, period. And I don't think enough people know and they don't, they don't hear enough about Larry Cohen. And... The other man, the other thing, Bill Lustig. Oh, man, we're going to have so much to talk about in, in terms of William Lustig, also known as Bill Lustig. So just keep that in mind. But this is a Larry Cohen film. Uh, man, to tell you that this, this film has everything. It has, it, it will make you laugh. It will make you cry. It will shock scare delight and enthrall you for an hour and 26 minutes it is a wonderful film but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because you know how we do here let's get off in the body count we have one don't eat yellow snow but dang sure probably don't eat white snow either because oof it, it, it didn't even look right, okay? <sighs> One whatever the I, a toxic waste I'm eating is mighty good, quote. One eating up all the profit sales pitch. One I'll be eating alive, the stuffed title card opening. One party in the fridge with the yogurt. Yeah, because it starts swinging early. I mean, strong early. One, I'm sending you to bed with my foot in your ass, foo. Because the dad here would make Red Foreman proud. One, it's better than ice cream. The stuff ad. One meeting of the deep state to stop the downfall of ice cream, including the FBI. But don't, shh. Nobody's supposed to know about the secret meetings on the yachts, right? It's 1985. That won't happen for several decades. One taking a walk through someone else's hotel room and dry, dropping a microphone in their pocket. One that is the American way, you know, quote. We meet one of the greatest characters, Mo Rutherford. One, everyone check your pockets. He's a ninja. One, no one is as dumb as I appear. Quote. One, you gotta punch out the dude from the FBI after they pay you that large check of money. Because of course you do, scene. One low on calories, good tasting, and it doesn't even spot, quote, mom, a walking ad for the stuff. Two actual brothers in the movie together, eating white groove. Well, one of them is, the other one don't like it. Yeah, if you, if you wonder why those two have such striking eyes, such... Like blue with them blue eyes. Yeah, it's because they're brothers. It's because those two are actually related. That is Scott and Brian Bloom. One loves the stuff and the other one hates it. Um, Scott is 
the one that plays Jason who hates it, and Brian is the one who plays the older brother who loves it. Um, the reason I know that is because Brian doesn't do as well in this movie. And Scott gets much higher billing, but of course he was in a little bit more of it, so I can't imagine that went over well between them, though. Brothers, brothers can be tr tricky kind of situations. Um, one, I don't, we don't know what the stuff is made of, but it sure tastes good because they can't recreate it. And then we find out it's actually pretty protected by patent secret state laws that allow Coke to keep its secret formula hidden. Because, <sighs> of course, corporations are going to kill us in the end. Because this isn't a new plot line. This, this, this is, are you sure this movie's in from 1985? I'm starting to see why Rupert Grant apparently loves this movie and this is his favorite film. I don't know where you gotta look to find that, but he said it in an interview somewhere. Or at least that's the rumor. Um, one swimsuit commercial that is very rudely interrupted. For business, of course, but, you know. I still would have liked to see that whole commercial. One money makes me horny in a hurry scene. Because of course it does. Uh, two. This happens twice now. Uh, my friends call me Mo because I always want Mo. Quote. From, I mean, the smoothest cat. In this one at least. We'll talk about him a little bit later in the MVPs. But your limo, one, your limo or mine, mine's bigger than yours, quote, convo. One, all the stuff must be destroyed. It will kill you. Freak out from Jason. Little dude, Jason, I mean, trips hard and... He goes full Rambo, tries to literally take it all out on him on his own. One meeting with a dog and his FDA human, Mr. Vickers. You'll understand when you get there. That dog is beautiful, but I don't I don't know how they made him that mad, but he was mad. That that was a mad puppy. One liquor can kill you. It should be outlawed. Foreshadowing. It's not the only thing that can kill you. One, the dog Ben loves the stuff too. And he eats it. And he loves it. He loves it. One looks like we're going to state of Virginia because everybody's moving there sort of weird plot line that you don't see very often, but it works. One Ben doesn't like loose ends that talk so much. Yeah. Dog foo. <laughs> One can't get enough of the stuff. Radio jingle. I mean, it... Mm. I can't get it out of my head even now. It's like, it's still in there. Oots, oots, oots. One, this town is empty as fuck. Yeet! One, chocolate chip Charlie. Business mogul, deadly weapon, and new best friend. One, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Store clerk. One, I say we hit him over the head and put him in the trunk. Well, we could do that. Quote. One beating the clay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. One beating the clay out of Gumby and his friends. Knocking the stuff out of the stuffies. Quote. Man, it, um, this is the part of the movie where if you don't know what's going on, it has come apart and unglued, literally. They're, they're literally mashing people.
would never use Glenn, uh, Glenn Danzig brand toothpaste because it runs up the wall scene. One, it's time Chocolate Chip Charlie met the FBI because Moe's got to go. One attempted hit and run in the stuff mobile. I mean, how you couldn't have used any other car. You had it had to be a stuff mobile. It had advertisement was peak with this movie. If you don't understand that this movie is advertisement, almost trying to cut, kill you. Oh, we got to talk about that in the gory details. But whoa. one highly addictive white substance. That isn't cocaine or sugar. I know. Sounds weird. But we've heard of it before. <laughs> One, I don't have to eat the stuff, do I? Quote. Yeah, I don't blame him. I'll take the money and run. I would have... Yeah. One, trading sins with your girlfriend. To get her on board. Because you've been lying to her this whole time and you you really need an ally, but you got to tell her what she's doing screwed up so she don't get mad at you. Um, yeah, it, gaslighting, gaslighting. <laughs> One Jason's feet make the front page news and get Mo's attention seen. One, they're good for us, and they kill the bad things inside us. Quote from Jason's father, who has partaken. One, you can starve upstairs until you eat some of the stuff. Problem. One, uh, sorry buddy, your family's gone. Uh, can, can I open a window? Because uh, your boy had to eat some shaving cream and ends up running out the house and in jumps in the car with Mo. And promptly, sorry, I vomited in your car, but I had to eat shaving cream. Quote, of, co uh, of course, because sometimes you just got to eat shaving cream. <laughs> ah, one tiny fun, si fun size pint of the stuff. And you can be part of the family again. And my boy Jason was like, no. <sighs> I wasn't throwing out all the food scene. That was so, I mean, it, it, it drove it home. And, and that's, that's, we'll go from there. Um, one ex-con from New Jersey. Next stop, Midland, Georgia. One stuff-filled plane ends up being a bad place for this boy Jason. Who ends up having to rush out. He was just trying to take a nap after he just ran and had to run from a family full of stuffies. One Jason ends up having to hide in the Fletcher Mines, which end up being not so abandoned. Who, well, he ends up making mistake after mistake because he then ends up crawling in a truck, a little silver tanker truck that ends up being empty, but is headed to a special quarry. So Jason's gonna get to meet some up close. Then, after a tour of the stuff facility, our couple, our, our two main characters other than Jason, um, Mo. And, uh, the girl, God, I can't remember her name. I remember the actress's name, but I can't remember the character's name. Oh, God, it's, I've, I've done too many of these already today. Um, but the two main characters end up, um, going on a tour of the stuff facility. And then, like dummies, they end up going back to the hotel provided by the company and try to sleep on a bed so full of the stuff it bursts stiff pillow though you'll know what i'm talking about one fire seems to be its only weakness 
One Glenn Danzig brand toothpaste is highly flammable and has a tendency to run up walls. One finding out, finally finding out what goes on at the old Fletcher Mines, because not only do the trucks get there, but uh, so do Mo and the girlfriend. Which I need to remember her name. I'll I'll have to go back and check that because that character has a name. Uh. I want to say it's Marie, but I no, it's probably not. Just, just we'll we'll look at that. We'll look at that. Um, one got to save Jason from the truck before he becomes a stuffy. One, we can't go to the FBI or the government. I know, we'll go to our local militia leader. Slash opera singer, Paul Sorvino. He's got a castle in Georgia. Plot point. Okay, I mean, if you... Hard right, hard right. One, when your situation sounds like a conspiracy theory... <laughs> And this one, mm-hmm. One, their headquarters is within 100 miles of the great Colonel Spears. One, oh, I wouldn't worry about that, son. You'll probably be a casualty, quote. One, taking down the stuff factory with Mo Rutherford's inspiring monologue. Inspiring. One giant stuff dragging, complete with all these, well, it's having trouble getting through all of these little containers, so. It's complete with all the workers, but then gets completely shut down by having to run through a room full of containers. One, hey, Chocolate Chip Charlie's alive. Nice, he can, oh my god, no, not you, Chocolate Chip Charlie. One burning down the radio station, but only just a little. We can still make the broadcast. Because we got to make the most important broadcast we have ever made in human history. That everyone actually listened to. And it wasn't like a Joe Rogan podcast. And finally, I said eat it. Or you eat lead. So you know how it feels finale because of course there's no better way to finish it than with a little vengeance Dave says four and a half stars this is a fantastic film and a classic horror film and if you have not seen it it is the basis for so many other tropes and horror films it has some of the tightest writing it has some of the tightest color schemes and ads the whole time the movie's working on you, so the subtext of the movie is working within the text to make you feel more uncomfortable about how much the subliminal messaging is work. Fantastic. Go see it before I spoil the whole dang thing. I'm literally fixing to do what the stuff he's in the movie do. You better go now. Five, four, three, two, one. And that's going to do it for the spoiler section of this here recording. Thank you so much. Sorry about the awkward weirdness. I'm in a weird headspace right now, but we're doing it. We're doing it hard. MVPs to Michael Moriarty as Mo, Garrett Morris at, as Chocolate Chip Charlie, um, Paul Sorvino as Colonel Spears, Andrea Markovici as uh, this female character. God. She's the ad director who ends up falling in with Mo, And I can't remember her name. And then Scott Bloom and Brian Bloom, Bloom, the Bloom brothers, for making us fall in love with white goo. <laughs> like all teenage boys tend to do. But that's going to do it for the non-spoiler side of this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you leave a like. I hope you subscribe and come back. But you need to shoo away. Are they gone? Have you gone yet?
leave now or be spoiled. It's not my responsibility anymore. I'm, I'm giving you that. Out. So, <clears throat> the thing about this movie is, is, I get it. It's it's written as cocaine's a hell of a drug, and if cocaine were ever released to the general public, its addictive qualities and everything else would destroy society. Okay. But what if cocaine wasn't, was bad in a different way? Was bad in the way it makes us cease being humans and became a control of substance. That's something that we don't know why. It just goes inside us and kills all the bad things so the good things can live, you know. And that's going to be the topic for these gory details. It really does come down to how much they're selling us the thing the very thing that's going to end up being our demise how much we buy the thing that ends up being our demise how much consumerism is killing us at a record pace and we can do nothing about it but buy 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 you know the i get why this movie has such a fan base and i feel bad for those who haven't seen it before my man y'all have missed out and i've missed out up until this point the the sort of oh man some of the some of the the, the moods of the time may be different some of the sensibilities may be a different but the feel the the overall sense of dread the overall sense of how you're being played the overall sense of what's working against you the sense that corporations are doing it the sense that it's a product it's something they want you to be in love with something they want you to buy something they need you to buy because if you buy it it makes you complicit it makes you part of it it makes you you know connected to the control mechanism. Now I don't want to talk about drugs. I want to talk about cell phones. I want to talk about social media. Corruption of our media. To be what they need it to be. You see it a lot. I'm just saying. It doesn't have to be a drug. It doesn't have to be. It could be a video game. It could be a movie. It could be a movie. An addictive substance doesn't have to be a drug. It does not have to be some substance that changes your life. No, nope. it can be uh, addicted to a person. It can be totally obsessive. It can be bad for everybody. So I think there's a reason this movie's coming back around. It's it's way better and it touches way more into what more people are going through and what more audiences can relate to than your average movie. Now, can I help it that this damn monster looks like a cum monster the whole No. And that's gonna be part of the whole you you laugh at this one, but I think that makes it scarier. I think an eldritch monster from beyond the pale might end up looking like a whipped cream topping, okay? Might end up slithering into my life and trying to eat me. I don't think that's uncalled for. I think that all plays a part and has a role. And we've seen it before in other things. And it's like, does it always have to be a green monster? Does it, you know, if you look at the the blob... If you look at that movie and you look at how that slime monster works, it is pink. It is pink and, and translucent. It looks like a gelatinous cube and it has veins in the most uncomfortable way. It has veins. It's like, mmm. So again, does it always have to look that way? And I like how gooey this stuff is. The stuff itself, it, it, it looks right to me. It, it, it has that sort of feel of, this had to look, and let me put it this way. The stuff had to look good enough to eat to somebody. And not like shaving cream the whole time. So I get it. It can't have been a weird color. Because people aren't going to eat something green. It's 
something in our psychology. It's like the yellow of a bumblebee. We know it's bad or we know it's dangerous. So we typically stay away from the yellow and the black combination. It's the same thing with the stuff. If it had been an off color, if it had been red, if it had been pink, if it had been green, if it had been blue, if it had been some weird color, that would have been a reason not to eat it. And I think you really got to respect the movie for going, well, I know it's going to look like jizz, but I mean, shit, you're going to have to do it. It's a big, it's a big jizz monster. You can't help it. It's a little silly looking if you think about it like that, but I, I think it's really scary once you think about a jizz monster trying to eat you. Okay, so I'm not even gonna keep that imagery. That that it's a it's a it's a shaving cream monster. If you need to calm that imagery down a little bit, but the other thing is, it it sort of plays into the whole thing of like the conspiracy theorist ends up being right sorta and it's like they're in the right position they're doing what they need to be doing but they've missed the mark and it takes the normal man meeting up with the conspiracy theorist and going whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you the thing you're worried about is actually happening over here and it's like so the key is not to bring the conspiracy theorists down. It's to, the mirror. The moral of this movie may not the sort of conclusion to it may not be the best sort of moral story, but I think the sort of danger, the sort of lesson, the sort of fear that this movie touches on is one that we as modern audiences are very familiar with, and one we are very in tune with and are ready to deal with and therefore we find some comfort in this film we find some camaraderie and it's it's a good film to us so but i think that's gonna do it for this review um man i love the color schemes of this film it is so of its time it is such such a marketing scheme that I swear fashion could bring back and make hip today. And I'm surprised that we don't see it more often. But that's going to do it for this episode, Dungeon Dwellers. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you will join us again around our fire as we tell spooky tales and talk about scary movies. But thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that you have a good adventure. And we'll see you on our next journeys. But until then... Maybe stick with normal food. Maybe it's enough. Enough is enough with the beyond food. <laughs>